Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you're registered. And we are down here in session C6 today, so we will kick things off by turning it over to the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Thank you, Joelle. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully this will work correctly today. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here we go. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see my screen okay. I'm Gabby Williams and I am the Regional Recruitment Specialist for the Kansas City area. And what that means is I'm located right here in Kansas City, ready to serve all of my Kansas students, my Missouri students, a little bit of my Northern Arkansas students and pretty much everywhere in between in the Great Plains. Um, joining me today, we also have Alejandro. Alejandro, if you wanna just wave, wave to the crowd. <laughs> um, he is one of our recruitment specialists um, located in Nebraska. And me and Alejandro, we are just a tiny bit of our staff here today. We actually have recruitment specialists all over the United States, as well as several, <laughs> to say the least, in, in Lincoln, uh, Nebraska. So thank you for joining us today. And um, Alejandro is going to answer any questions that you have in the chat. One thing you should know about Nebraska is that we really do foster um, inquisitivity and we want you to ask questions. We love questions. So please make sure you're adding those to the chat and Alejandro will be happy to answer those. Um, in addition, when my session is over, we will be staying on the full 45 minutes. So if you think of something after the presentation, it's because, gosh, I wish I would have asked that. Please ask, we are still here and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Okay, so to get started, um, we are the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. We are the main campus. We are the original land-grant university in the state of Nebraska. We are also part of the Big Ten Alliance, which means you're going to get Big Ten education, Big Ten academics, and a Big Ten location. I'm going to go ahead and hopefully you can still see that. Are you seeing that, Alejandro? Can you give me a thumbs up? Are you seeing the city of Lincoln? Okay, fantastic. <laughs> so um, located in the capital city of, of Lincoln, Nebraska, and you can actually see the Capitol building um, just a few blocks away from campus. So you're gonna get this amazing ten, big 10 education um, while being in a town that is just vibrant, very much a college town with all sorts of things to do and explore. So um, one thing to note though, is that we are one of the smallest schools in the Big Ten Alliance with only 20,000 undergraduate students. So you're still gonna get that hometown Nebraska feel um, right there in Lincoln while still getting all of the Big Ten academics. Um, this is such a great shot, Lincoln. It shows that um, you know, not only do you have campus, the downtown area is right there by Lincoln. Um, you can walk to the movies, coffee shops, um, the college student stable of Taco Bell and Chipotle is right there. Um, so you get all this wonderful campus and academics right there in the middle of Lincoln where everything is safe walking distance. You can walk down to the Pinnacle Bank Arena and watch a concert and safely walk back to your dorm. So you really get to not only have the university, but the entire um, campus and, and academics of Lincoln. Speaking of academics, we have over 150 majors at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, and we are really truly dedicated to our students. Um, the, within the last couple of years, the college business invested $82 million into their building. And it is beautiful, um, four-story atrium building, and it is there for the students. We have classrooms, we have academic advising, and the biggest college fair, internship fair on campus right there in that building. But not to be outshined, <laughs> our College of Engineering actually invested $75 million into upgrading their facility 
and we'll be adding a $85 million brand new engineering complex within the next two years. Very student focused, there will be a student worker space. It is not for professors or research, it is there for the students. Um, but you know, business and engineering, it's not our only two majors on campus. We have a little bit of everything. We have fine and performing arts. We have education. We have everything in our College of Arts and Sciences from psychology to political science. Um, I mean, imagine being able to live right there in the capital city with the capital, right? You know, down a few blocks, you can do an internship right there at the Capitol building if you're a political science major, women's studies, environmental studies, um, so many opportunities right there. But one thing I also want to mention is we do have our campus, which is also in Lincoln, and that houses all of our agricultural programs, food science, animal science, pre-veterinary science, and of course, our PGA golf <laughs> major, which is quite popular. And then of course, we have our College of Architecture on our city campus as well. So a lot of majors, a lot to explore. Um, definitely check it out. Um, but we know that, you know, academics isn't the only reason why you want to go away to college. And the great thing about Lincoln is it's pretty close to pretty much everywhere where, you know, you guys are located. Um, you can definitely have a going away to college sort of feel, but still being able to get home, you know, within a few hours if you need to. Um, oh, bye. Okay. <laughs> so to wrap up, um, we have over 400 student organizations, um, but most importantly, you're going to be joining um, the tradition of being the University of Nebraska Huskers. Um, go Big Red. So I'm going to flip through. Please come for a campus tour. We are in person campus tours. Please come and visit us. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. So next up, we'll hear from Concordia University, Chicago. Awesome. Can you all hear me okay? Yep, we hear you. Perfect. Thank you. I'm going to um, share my screen really quickly. Uh, my presentation was not coming up for me today, so I'm going to uh, present off of this PDF. I know it's not ideal, um, but this is still going to be a really, really good overview just of some of the points about who we are, what we're all about here at Concordia University Chicago. Um, so right away, uh, we are a small liberal arts school located about 10 miles straight west of downtown Chicago. Um, so while the uh, third largest city in the country is just a stone's throw away from us, you can still get there uh, by train in about 20 minutes while also kind of learning and focusing in a suburban area of River Forest, um, which like I said, uh, is very kind of quiet, residential um, and focused. So um, you can read all of that where we were located, or excuse me, we were founded in um, 1864 as a teacher's college. So we'll talk more about the majors later, um, but that's actually what uh, we were founded on. We are rooted in the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod. So that Christian um, and faith-based component is a huge part of who we are as well. Um, and a few, more, a, a few more things you can see, accreditation obviously in the Higher, Le Higher Learning Commission, um, as long as the, as well as the National Association of, of Schools of Music. So like I said, teaching is a big part of who we are and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, towards the top, you can just see kind of some uh, quick breakdown of uh, kind of who we are and what we're all about as far as like our community, which we'll talk about in a second later as well. Um, here, you can see what our most popular academic programs are. So where you see kind of this number 70 here in the middle of the page, so right away, our most popular programs are gonna be things like psychology, computer science, exercise science, um, elementary education, um, criminal justice, and so on. Um, we actually have had a huge, huge boost in the areas of computer science, where not only are we placing nationally in competitions, we're also placing internationally against computer science and programming teams um, all over the world. So that is a program that's absolutely exploding right now. Um, as well as our exercise science department, we've completely overhauled the entire exercise science facility to be completely state of the art. Um, and as we'll talk about in just a moment, a large part of our campus life is the academic pro, or excuse me, the athletic program. Um, and so those students are actually given the opportunity to uh, learn and grow in an environment where they're applying the knowledge they're learning um, and not just learning from a textbook. 
Um, I'll kind of circle back to this last as far as the undergraduate admissions requirements, because I know not everyone here is a, um, is a high school senior right now. But like I said, I'll circle back to that in a second. Our extracurricular activities. So right now we have 19 D3 athletic teams on campus. And that's basically anything besides um, like wrestling and golf. So if you can think of, uh, of a sport that you're playing right now in high school, for the most part, we probably have that here on campus. We actually just instated a cheer and stunt team as well, um, as well as a dance team. So those are two of our newest. Um, but yeah, if you can think of a sport, we probably have it. The other opportunities we have as far as extracurricular activities would be um, very much so rooted in our music department. So we have between choral and instrumental groups, we have about 11 groups right now. Those are gonna range anywhere from our large wind symphony um, and capel choirs who actually tour every year to our uh, smaller groups like handbells, um, the jazz band, chamber orchestra, things like that. And then lastly, we have over 45 clubs and organizations. Um, so those are gonna be things like, um, you know, your spiritual life opportunities, service, charity, leadership. I know we have some social groups right now, um, things like uh, Nacho Average Cheese Club where they literally just get together and, and you know, sample cheeses, uh, the superheroes and friends. So that's gonna be a group that just reads comic books. Um, so everything in between, we've got those opportunities to stay involved. As far as how many of us there are and where we're coming from, right now we have about 1500 undergraduate students. Um, this larger number here are our grad students and most of those are online. So you won't really feel that population on campus. It's really just this 1500 number. And that's really, uh, like I said, where that close knit, very small campus community feel comes into play. On average, your class size is gonna be about 15 students per one professor. Um, so like I said, we're a small group and we're, you're gonna get to know your professors and you're gonna get to know your peers. And then, like I said, where we're coming from. So almost every state in the country is represented. Uh, we have athletics, or excuse me, we have uh, you know, students coming to participate in our athletic events um, from literally every corner of the country and even a handful of foreign countries as well. So when it comes to that diversity piece, Concordia Chicago is an extremely diverse campus. That's a huge part of what we're all about. Um, and you're gonna be learning and growing in a place that's very much so characterized by that. Um, so lastly, as we're kind of rounding this out here, uh, a little bit about tuition fees, room and board, and the financial aid piece. So um, you can see what our average fees are right now, or excuse me, our, um, our total cost of attendance. This is going to be you know, pretty much standard for from year to year. You're going to also be eligible for a merit scholarship based on your unweighted GPA. So that can range anywhere from about ten to twenty-five thousand um, dollars. At any rate, let us know. Our contact information is all over this stuff. So let us know if you have any other questions for us, um, and I'll be happy to help. All right, thank you, Jefferson. And next, we will hear from Washburn University. Perfect. Hello, everybody. My name is Maddie Brockelman, and I am with Washburn University Admissions Office. I am also joined by uh, my coworker, Ali Iverson. Um, so we both work um, with students in the Kansas area. I work with students from Oklahoma, and Ali works with students from Missouri. So um, all of the bordering states do get in-state tuition. Um, so Ali and I are both excited that we get to be here with you, and thanks for spending part of your Sunday with us. We appreciate it. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, as long as Allie gives me the okay that my screen looks good. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry guys, okay, perfect. Facts about Washburn. So we are a medium sized campus, about 6,500 students on campus with our law school and our tech school attached to us. Um, it ranges to be about 7,000 students. So um, 
medium sized campus, about 30 students um, in every class is sometimes similar to your high school classes, which is really good. It's not a huge transition. 60% um, of our students are traditional, so coming straight from high school. If that's not you, that's perfectly fine. We do have transfer counselors um, as well. Um, at Washburn, we do have a 12 to 1 student faculty ratio. So um, what that basically means is that there's 12 students and one professor, which is really nice because a lot of students always ask, you know, I really want that one on one connection with my professor or I don't just want to be a number. Oftentimes you'll hear lots of, um, of your classmates say that sort of thing. And that's pretty much what Washburn is, which is really nice to have. Um, especially because 96% of the faculty do have PhDs um, or the highest degree in their field. Um, so you're never gonna be taught by a TA or a grad student or anything like that at all, um, which comes in handy for you know, recommendations for scholarships or um, say you wanna move on to um, you know, go to grad school, that sort of thing. Um, with that, we do have 200 educational programs. So whether you are dead set on being pre-med um, or you have no idea what you wanna do, Washburn um, has tons of options for you. Um, we do award millions of dollars in scholarships and financial aid every single year at Washburn. Um, your life at Washburn as a student, what would it be like? I know you're probably really nervous trying to figure out what that would be like. So let me help you. We have about 125 student organizations, um, and that's anywhere from sororities, fraternities, um, you know, we have religious organizations on campus. Um, we honestly even just recently had a hammocking group come to campus, which is nice because at Washburn, um, if you don't see a club or organization that we have, just grab a few friends, grab a faculty um, or a staff member and create your own group. And that's a big perk of being part of a medium-sized school. You get to have the advantages um, at Washburn. And we do have tons of athletic teams as well. And we all do have one of the top 50 recs in the nation. Um, we have four resident styles for freshmen because freshmen are required to live on campus your freshman year, uh, but you also are able to have a car and that sort of thing. Um, I have two pictures. We have Lincoln Hall here. It's uh, one of the newest halls built in the last five years. And I will say um, lots of times students want to know, you know, like they don't want to live in a bad dorm or a stinky dorm or anything like that. At Washburn, we refer to our dorms as residence halls, and that's because they are sweet. So they are very nice. Um, as you can see here in the picture, um, you get everything in the room except for the decoration um, and these two fellows here. So um, really nice. And then we do have a buffet style in Lincoln Hall. Our next hall is the LLC um, Living Learning Center at Washburn. Um, it was built within the last 15 years, but definitely still up to date. Um, and next, we're going to move on to our academics at Washburn. So tons of degree programs. If you see yours here, awesome. Um, Topeka Capital Advantage, there's tons to do in Topeka. I know lots of times um, people either don't have to Topeka or they went there on a field trip. There's tons of stuff to do. I'd love to go into detail with you on all of this. Um, so if you see your major here, those are just a few things that we noted down about that. Financial aid and cost of attendance, the most important question right here. Um, so if you have your phone out, feel free to take a picture of this, um, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do, but this is the cost of um, tuition, everything I want to um, have you look at this page, but specifically um, note the student activity fee here. It's um, $110, and this is for in-state tuition. Um, Kansas, Missouri residents, Oklahoma, Texas, this is all applicable to you. Um, if you're not in-state, we can take a look at those prices some other time. Just go ahead and message Allie in the chat. Um, yeah, so I wanted to direct your attention to the student activity fee here. It's $110 for the entire year. So that's huge because you get access to the parking on campus, um, this tutoring services for literally everything, which I know I and Allie both used a lot, um, the student wellness center. So if you're not feeling well, you're not from here, go to the student health center. Most of the time they don't charge you. The rec center, playing intramural sports, um, tons of different opportunities on campus um, with that student activity fee, which is really nice. Um, academic scholarship, um, financial aid, all of that. Um, we really talk to you more about scholarships in depth once you do apply, um, which if you are a senior right now, we do encourage you to apply. There is a tuition um, fee going on right now. Allie can message you all in the chat about that. Um, but yeah, any questions, concerns, feel free to email us at Washburn Admissions. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. And next we'll hear from Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne. 
Everyone, how's it going? And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right. Well, everybody, thank you for joining today. My name is Daniel Flores. I'm the recruitment officer for EHL. Um, we are we actually go by three, two, one model. So the three is actually what you see on your screen. We have three locations for our program. On the left hand side is Lausanne, Switzerland. In the middle is Pasug, Switzerland, and on the right hand side is Singapore. First thing to note, programs taught entirely in English, you do not need to know the local language. Uh, the two make it simple. One is going directly into the bachelor's degree. The other one is going to the professional pathway where you get a lot more work experience and that's focused specifically on culinary arts and hotel operations. The one stands for the bachelor's degree that we offer. We only offer one. We make life super simple. It's a bachelor's of science in international hospitality management. Now, one thing to note, I will repeat this. Hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. Once again, hospitality is not just hotels and restaurants. This is a service industry which is one in 10 jobs globally. If you see yourself having an international career, not a local, not a domestic, but international, this is what will prepare you for that. So as far as the student body goes, a uh, couple unique things is this is actually our dress code. We wear suits every single day. It's to prepare you for the real world. Um, if you're a guy and you've never worn a suit and tie, people will notice that in an interview. If you're a girl that hasn't walked in heels before, people will notice that. So from day one, it's about how do we prepare you to get that interview, but also to get that job. But this is also just life skills. Now, on campus, this is extremely diverse. Um, we have over 120 nationalities, so over 120 countries represented on campus. 84% um, of our students know three or more languages. We don't say that to freak you out, but the cool thing is that language is embedded in our program. So to also make it very simple, if number one, you appreciate culture, number two, you appreciate and want to learn another language, and number three, you want to travel, I highly recommend leaving the States because you can definitely get that in Europe. Uh, we are currently ranked globally as the world's number one hospitality and leisure management program. And we were the first and only school with a Michelin star training restaurant. So you get to not only cook the food, but you get to enjoy it as well. We also have dual accreditation, which for you means that you can work and you can continue your education anywhere around the world. The world becomes your oyster. Now, I'm going to focus on a couple of our campuses. One of them is our Lausanne campus, which is behind me and on your screen. Now, uh, it's all environmentally sustainable, all brand new. It should be done by the end of the year. Switzerland is huge on sustainability and very minimalist, uh, very minimalistic. So we have two brand new apartment buildings, three brand new dorms, and what's on your screen is a sports facility. There's going to be an indoor gym, indoor pool, indoor spa. College life is rough. You need your mani pedis. You can get that on campus. Uh, to give also another example, this is the quintessential European experience. In a three-hour flight from Geneva, which is a 45-minute train ride from Lausanne, you are in 36 different countries, not cities, not states, countries. If you want to go to Paris over the weekend, you can. If you want to have your pizza and pasta in Italy, you can. If you want to go have some awesome tapas, go to Spain. This is the college experience that you get in Europe. Switzerland, you have all four seasons, so hot summers, cold winters, you're an hour and a half from the first ski resort as well. So it's definitely a great way to uh, enjoy your, your seasons. Now, if you're looking for something very different, that's where we also offer our Singapore campus. Very similar to Switzerland, this is filled with expats, so people working or living in Singapore that are not from Singapore. So you get an international vibe on campus and off campus. But this is also pretty much the business hub of Asia. So if you want to get in touch with the Asian market or at least get job opportunities, this is the way to do that. On the fun side too, in a three hour flight, you're in 17 different countries. If you wanna have your pho in Vietnam, if you wanna have your pad thai in Thailand, you could do that too. So also landscape more hilly, but then also luscious green. This is a foodie destination. Michelin star lunch for 15 bucks, that's what you get in Singapore. Now, kind of the meat and potatoes in our bachelor's degree. It's a four year program. 
embedded in that is one year of internship. We offer two six month internships and we offer them all over the world. The way it works, the first six months you switch off courses every week, making chocolates, making pastries, drinking wine, making cocktails, to cleaning toilets, making beds, folding laundry, doing inventory, learning French, visiting and eating at a three Michelin star restaurant. We're teaching you about service skills. Not so you can be a chef one day, you can if you want to, but that's not what this is built for. We're teaching you service skills because it's something that you create. You don't read about in a book. And Europe is very big on application-based theory. You're not just sitting in a class, taking your midterm final and that's it. It's you do that, you actually apply it in group work and also in your internships. So you do that for six months in Lausanne, Switzerland. And then right after that is a six month internship anywhere around the world. You come back for a year and a half, you take business courses, hospitality and language courses, then your second six month internship, then final year, you take elective courses and you actually end up being a consultant. Uh, fun fact, 96% of our students get a job within six months of graduation. And that's the highest of any school offering this program. 47% of our alumni work in hotels, restaurants, and whatnot, but because this is a business program, then you have 53% working in banking, accounting, NGOs, education, healthcare, health and beauty. We also have over 30,000 alumni working in over 150 countries. So if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be on. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And up next we have Florida Southern College. Hi everyone, my name is Dylan and I am an admissions counselor at Florida Southern College. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with everybody. So like I said, my name is Dylan and I'm an admissions counselor at Florida Southern College. So for some basic information first, Florida Southern College is located right in between Tampa and Orlando in beautiful sunny Lakeland, Florida. Florida Southern College was founded in 1883, which actually makes us one of the oldest private colleges in the state of Florida. We're home to about 3,000 total students, 60% of which are coming from the state of Florida. The remaining 40% of our students are coming from out of state, representing nearly 50 United States and 50 foreign countries as well. Here at Florida Southern, we have over 70 academic programs of study, as well as 16 pre-professional tracks and 11 master's and doctoral programs across our five schools. Some of our most popular majors are marine biology, business, nursing, and theater, but we are a liberal arts college at our core, so you're going to get a well-rounded education no matter what you decide to major in. Here at FSC, we emphasize engaged and experiential learning, which means we believe in the power of learning by doing. We want to immerse our students in the field as soon as possible, and we're able to offer specific engaged learning experiences in part because of our small class sizes. The average class at Florida Southern has about 18 students and our student to faculty ratio is 14 to 1. And all of our classes are taught by the professors themselves to ensure that you're learning from experts in your field at all times. As an extension of our engaged learning experience, we do offer all of our students three guarantees. The first guarantee that I'd like to highlight is study abroad. FSC students have several different options for studying abroad with experiences ranging from a few weeks to a full semester, and we offer both domestic and international travel options. Many of our students choose to study abroad through our Junior Journey program, which is a one to two week trip with an academic component that comes at little to no additional cost to our students. We also guarantee, we also guarantee internships to all of our students, regardless of their major. Students have the option to complete internships locally during the school year or go closer to home during school breaks. And the last of our three guarantees is that you'll graduate in four years or less. We're able to guarantee this because in addition to what I've already shared, our professors act as academic advisors and meet with our students several times per year to make sure they're on track for graduation. We're also very transfer credit friendly, so you actually may be able to start college with some courses already under your belt. These guarantees and academic opportunities are significant because they translate into post-graduation success for our students. In fact, 97% of our graduates are either employed or attending graduate school within one year of graduation. Outside of our academics and our outcomes, FSC does pride itself on being a true campus community. 
Students are required to live on campus for all four years, and our 16 housing options include on-campus residence halls, as well as apartment complexes near our campus that are set aside for our upperclassmen. There are also tons of ways to get involved, connect with classmates, and show your school spirit. We have 20 NCAA Division II athletic teams and several opportunities to participate in sports at the club and intramural level as well. We also have over 100 student clubs and organizations, ranging from Greek life to campus ministries to student government, as well as special interest clubs and organizations like acapella and astronomy. So now that I've shared about FSC, let's talk about the application process. First and foremost, it's 100% free to apply regardless of how you do so. Our application is available on our website as well as through the Common Application and Coalition. In addition to the application, we'll also need your high school transcript and a personal statement, but we are a test optional school, meaning that students are welcome to submit their test scores, but it's not a requirement. Letters of recommendation at FSC are also optional, but again, if you have them, we welcome your submission. Once we receive all of your required application materials, we operate on a rolling admissions basis, meaning that you'll get a decision from us in about three to six weeks. Finally, we know that the cost of college can be overwhelming, so every single application that we receive is automatically considered for an academic scholarship. Some departments on our campus also offer specific scholarships based on auditions, portfolio reviews, interviews, or athletic recruitment. We also accept any aid that you receive from the federal government by filing the FAFSA, as well as outside scholarships and savings plans. This means that at Florida Southern, you can earn financial aid from a variety of sources. I hope you all have learned, enjoyed learning about Florida Southern and I encourage you to visit our website for more information and to take a virtual tour of our beautiful campus. Thank you all so much. All right, and our final presentation for the six by six is from Rockhurst University. Thank you so much. All right, hi everybody. My name is Tony Gambino. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Rockhurst. Um, I work predominantly with students in the state of Kansas and then Kansas City private schools. Um, but then we do have counselors in um, Oklahoma and Nebraska as well. Um, and you can reach out to me and I can get you their contact information. Go ahead and share my presentation with you here. All right. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I am a graduate of Rockers, graduated in 2019. I double majored in business communication and political science. Uh, grew up in St. Louis. Um, love Kansas City. Been here for about five and a half years now. Don't plan on leaving. Um, it's a great big city. Um, and then Rockers is about 3,000 total students. We are a small liberal arts um, Catholic affiliated university. Um, so we do work um, closely with um, religions, but it's not a necessity. Only about 45% of our student body is Catholic. Um, so we do um, bring in lots of students from lots of different um, areas of religion um, and philosophy. So we encourage diversity and we, we really hope for it on our campus. So um, my contact information is there. So if you do have any questions, you can let me know. Um, Rockhurst, uh, within six months of graduation, 97% of our graduates within um, six months are within a career or grad school. Um, I really do think this speaks to our small class sizes. Um, we average class size is 24. Um, beginning of freshman year, you'll see class sizes um, right around 30 people. By the time you graduate by your senior year, you're looking at class sizes in the lower teens. So you'll really get to know your professors. Um, and that's definitely something that I loved about my time at Rockers. Um, we do have advisors that you will work with from day one to the day you graduate. Um, and they will help you along that journey of getting into um, different internships, finding a job after college, all of those great things. So definitely take advantage of that. Uh, we are um, value based, the best valued school in Missouri, number three on that list. And then 93% of our graduates seeking graduate school attend their first choice graduate program. Um, so that definitely speaks to those advisors helping you along that journey. Um, we are Catholic affiliated and really we are Jesuit, Jesuit uh, traditions. Um, so we really have these six core values that we follow. Um, it has really sent our students into this service mindset. So not only are you learning in the classroom, but then you're learning, you're using what you've learned and you're taking those experiences into um, the world right around you here in the Kansas City area and also into service trips as well. Um, we do about 29,000 hours of community service each year. 
um, working with 45 plus organizations right here in the Kansas City area, ranging from um, community gardens right around campus to bigger organizations like Operation Breakthrough or Halo Foundation that are working with homeless and at risk youth in Kansas City, Missouri. Major cities tend to have a large population of homeless homelessness. And Kansas City is definitely not alone in that. Um, there's about 7,000 homeless youth in Kansas City. Um, so these organizations are really um, a great place to um, do service work, but also to kind of get out there and see what a city's like and kind of um, kind of find your own pathway here in the Kansas City area. Um, you are in a big city, so when it comes to what degrees you're choosing and things like that, there is lots of internship opportunities as well. Um, those service immersion trips can take you into Central, uh, Central, uh, Central America over into the Caribbean area and then back through the United States. Um, domestic trips are $450 and international trips are $1,000. The university does subsidize those in half, which I think is a great blessing by the university to do so. Um, there is financial aid and things that you can apply for to help in that process of getting into those trips as well. Um, some of our most popular majors we offer here, um, pre-medicine, biochemistry, um, chemistry, biology, physics of medicine are top five there in that area of study. Um, depending on what you're wanting to do, um, you'll have a pre-med advisor um, that works with you from day one, helping you with just picking out classes um, to um, med, uh, the uh, test, um, MCAT test prep, um, all the way to helping you with interview prep going into those, um, those schools that you're looking to go into. So they will really help you along in that path. Um, business is another big area of study for us, um, depending on what you're wanting to do. Nonprofit leadership is a great um, dual degree. So a lot of students that are doing marketing or accounting will also pick up a double degree with that, uh, that dual degree with nonprofit leadership as well. And management is also an opportunity there for you. Exercise science and psychology are another uh, great area of study. Um, and a lot of our students that are going into exercise science will then enter our pre-PT program um, and then into our doctorate of uh, physical therapy that is a two and a half year program. And same with occupational therapy if you attend into the psychology program. Education is another area of study that I like to encourage students to look at, elementary, secondary, and special education. And then because we are in the city, there's lots of great schools um, to do your student teaching and to find a job once you get out of school. Rockers did just acquire St. Luke's College of Health Sciences, um, which has become our fourth full college on our university campus. Um, and we are actually in the process of building them a brand new um, state-of-the-art nursing building um, and that has a 100% job placement rate with the St. Luke's health system here in the Kansas City area, taking about two thirds of our graduates out into their system. Um, and then engineering is a joint program with UMKC. Outside of that, we are a liberal arts college. So there's tons more um, degrees to choose from, um, 75 plus degrees to talk about there. Um, student organizations are a great opportunity for you to really um, get involved on campus. I will definitely say Rockers, this is a big part of our university. Getting involved is the number one thing students do. Two to three organizations is not unheard of with students um, going from athletic groups to campus programming groups to student uh, sororities and fraternities. Um, so there's lots of great opportunities there. And I want to finish off here with my merit scholarships. Um, because we are um, finance, we are a private institution, our, our, our cost is a little bit higher, but we do like to knock it down pretty quick. 100% of our student body receives some form of financial aid. Our top merit scholarship is that Breen Scholarship for $24,000. We are test optional. We do not require an ACT or SAT score to be admitted, um, but you can kind of um, see if you have a specific GPA and you wanna get up into a, a higher merit scholarship, you can do so by um, having a specific ACT or SAT score. All we need to get you admitted into university is a transcript. Um, and from there, if we do need a letter of recommendation or anything, we will reach out to you. If you have any questions for me, I'm here for you. Um, and you can always reach out with any questions that you have. Um, thank you so much. All right, thank you everyone. So with the last couple of minutes, we've got a few questions for our panelists here. So I'll have everybody turn on their videos. And the first question, and we'll hear from them in presentation order is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? First and foremost, I would say um, it's very important that your college has the program that you're looking for. So, um, you know, when it comes to um, academics, we are not all the same and what our offerings are. Um, so definitely make sure that it does have the program that you're interested in. 
And then I would also say, um, if you have the opportunity, please take a campus visit. All of our presentations were fantastic today, but to really get the feel of the campus, please try to get onto those campuses so you can see what it would really be like to be a student there. Uh, Concordia is next. Sure, yeah, I would, I would echo that sentiment about visiting campuses. I would also say that um, I think it's most important to, um, you know, pick that campus that's going to be, um, or where you feel like you can be supported and where you feel like that community is going to, um, yeah, just take care of you in that way. I think a lot of times a campus with like a rock wall or something um, just really exciting might, you know, on the surface look really exciting, but, but yeah, just always kind of take that one where you where you feel comfortable and you feel where you can be supported. Um, at Washburn, I think one of the most important things like when I went to college and decided was looking into the organizations that they have to offer, seeing if there's something that can connect you to campus more so than just your degree and really help you build a friend group. So that's one thing that I would really recommend looking into. I would definitely recommend looking into the college experience because every university offers something different. So what are you looking for? Um, if you're looking to really get outside of your comfort zone, then get outside of your comfort zone. Don't stay local. Uh, and then also think about down the road, what kind of job opportunities do you want? Because that's another big thing. Do you want local, domestic, international? Because that will also dictate where you should probably go. I would definitely recommend as you research your colleges to make sure that it's somewhere you can really picture yourself and whether that's through a physical tour or a virtual tour and as you're researching programs, just really make sure that you can picture yourself eating in the dining hall, that you can see yourself sitting on the quad, that you can imagine yourself joining clubs on campus and taking classes that you're really excited about. Yeah, I'll just echo what everybody else says. Go visit the school. That's what you got to do. Go see it. That's what you need to do. Um, at least reach out to your counselor and maybe set up a meeting with a current student or even a faculty or staff member to really get an understanding of what degree you're wanting to go into. And check out the website because I know a lot of us schools have course descriptions on there where you can actually dive really deep into those different classes that you can take. And you can kind of see what your next four years will look like. So um, that's what I would say. Yeah. All right, and with the last couple of minutes, we'll just ask one more question, and that is to have the panelists go through and give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Well, if anybody is familiar with the University of Nebraska, you will know that we are the Corn Huskers, and Herbie Husker is our mascot. Um, so a very interesting fact is we were not always the Corn Huskers, even though everybody remembers us as such. Um, we were actually originally the Nebraska Bug Eaters. So hopefully that doesn't deter you <laughs> from checking out Nebraska, but it's definitely one of the, the funnier, the funnest facts um, that we have about our, our school. Thank you. Definitely, I'd say one of the, um, one of the funnest uh, facts about us uh, in most recent terms, uh, our D3 baseball team has actually been in the college world series twice in the last three years so um, I think this might be the year that they can get it done if they get a full season in um, but yeah most recently that's been one of the most exciting things for sure hi Maddie from Washburn I would say a fun fact is um, a lot of people this is our mascot it's literally a human so it's kind of funny because most people have cute mascots or you know like Gabby was saying about um, Nebraska's mascot but Washburn's is um, a man so lots of times people confuse him with like the Monopoly man or you know Abraham Lincoln so it's kind of interesting uh, but we do have BuzzFeed's like top five like scariest mascots so fun fact um, Allie might have one too I don't um, I would say a fun fact about Washburn is I know Jefferson mentioned that this would be a fun thing we have a rock wall so that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, fun fact for EHL is we actually started off as the world's first hotel school in 1893. And then luckily we, um, we transitioned to becoming ranked as the world's number one hospitality and leisure management program, which means a focus outside of just hotels. 
So a fun fact about Florida Southern College is that our campus is actually designated as a National Historic Landmark site because our campus has the largest single site collection of Frank Lloyd Wright architecture anywhere in the world. And you guys were prepared for this one. I need to get more facts on me. All right. Um, I would say probably something that I find interesting is Rockers University became co-ed in 1969. Before that, we were an all-male college. Um, and now our male to female ratio is 40 to 60. So um, we have been taken over by the ladies, which I don't think is a bad thing. Um, but it's just kind of funny how we have gone from being a male college to now a very um, more majority ladies college there you go all right well with that that's always my favorite question for the panelists we will uh, go ahead and wrap things up so i want to say thank you to all the presenters all of the attendees who joined today when you close this window there will be a link to a very quick four question survey we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide and again this is just one of many sessions being hosted so be sure to sign up for those additional sessions and in about a week you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings on the same website where you registered so thank you again to all the presenters, all the panelists and attendees who joined us today and have a lovely evening, everyone.